Now we're about to hear what it sounds like with open headers. You might want to take that mic off. Who's going to blow the mic out? <laughs> What's up, Life Right Nation? <laughs> What's up, Life Right Nation? He's back. For those of you who've been following along, Step Child 3.0 is officially underway, it and is, we're so excited. It is in pieces. We have found so much extra damage, stuff that we don't hopefully have to even worry about. We've got the axles out. We've got the fuel tank out. We've got a whole new suspension kit coming, but yes, today we're working on a new fuel system because we deleted the OEM fuel system. Because if you'll remember, if you've been following along, we are swapping the stepchild from a three link rear to a triangulated four link rear, which means that the old fuel tank, the factory fuel tank, won't work any longer, which is why today we're installing this bad boy. I know. Right here, so Moto Built. This is a rear mounted Moto Built gas tank. It's aluminum, but with a super crazy heavy duty steel skid. I didn't really look into it too much. I saw that it was a 21 gallon and factory is 20 gallon, 21 gallon. So perfect, we're great there. Moving weight to the back. We won't have weight shifted off to the side like the OEM gas tank. But I was like, okay, the OEM fuel pump will fit here and they're gonna give you straps and ways to attach it. But I thought everything else was up to us and I wanna keep all the evap i want to keep everything in there and so chris and i mostly chris uh spent some time going over all these fittings and trying to make come here let me show you like these are the fuel return and fuel feed and so we were trying to find fuel adapters feed. yeah fuel feed and evap we were trying to find adapters to clip to here to run to the back and all this that and the other um what i didn't do was open up the rest of the boxes that came <laughs> in which turns out that moto build already did everything for you Literally the fuel filler neck adapter with hose, wiring extensions. This, these are the evap line splice. And they even give you, they supply you with more evap yeah. line. So it's, I didn't know it was a full kit, but I guess it's a full kit. It even comes with these anti-rollover valves. There's the little ball in there. So if you flip over and anyway, it, it, it literally comes with everything. Which is great because we, we would have needed it all and we would have had to figure it all out. It comes with this cover. So this cover is because, you know how you have a cubby in the back of the Jeep where you lift up the, the little carpet, the little, carpet the little pocket? We have to cut that out. He has to cut that out. Because that's, <laughs> that's now where the gas tank and the fuel pump's gonna sit and you wouldn't be able to access anything here. It's actually fiberglass. It's like a glass It's, a, it's FRP. It's FRP. Reinforced plastic. Anyway, so you get that out, and this is your new floor cover. For the bottom. For the bottom. The cabin in the back, basically. Yeah. And you know, you know what the best part about this is? For some reason, your fuel pump ever goes out. It takes. You just got to open the cover. You just open the cover. Yeah. One other thing you do is you lose the factory sway bar with this kit. It, we already don't have one, but you will lose your factory sway bar mount because this mounts to the factory sway bar bracket. Which is, yeah. which which is, is a great time to go to Anti-Rock anyway. Which if is you're what this, we're currently running. So. If you're at this point, you're not using a factory. If you're, I'm just, if you're I'm going, saying. if you're going triangulated four link rear, and and all that. Then and moving I, your I, fuel tank. Yeah, I doubt you have. Odds a, are you don't. You have an rod, hey, so. hey, 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 some people will use this as an extension. Now you got forty some odd gallons. You could. That's too many gallons. That's of fuel. true. Act. No, it's not. For people, all you, all the Overlander guys that are out there. I'm just saying, for us, that's too many gallons. We like. Being risky and running oh, out of yeah. fuel sometimes. That's happened. Anyways, this right here is what we have to cut out essentially. That little cubby at the very back where you gotta lift a little panel and you get a little extra storage, that's gotta go. So we do have to cut that out of the bottom of the Jeep and the fuel tank will essentially fit right in this space right here. But I stayed here with the broom and I just broomed out that? the water. What was that kind of? We really need to like spray all this and then high pressure rinse we it in the shop. You mean we should have cleaned the Jeep? before we brought it into the shop to work on and cut everything out of? We don't clean anything. Hey, at least we're not in New York, because this would have been a rusty... Sorry, yeah. guys, if you're in New York, but I used to live in New York, and I know that uh, this is awesome. I mean, look how much rust we have without This is even, much better than... Look how much rust we have without even... It's not That's crazy. Um, I don't even remember painting that, off, to be honest with you, when I built that. You did I didn't we did it at Woody's. We'll, we'll fix it sometime. Well, guess what time that is. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. Once upon a time, 
when we put the first Hemi in before the stroker, the exhausts came loose or something happened and uh... <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> it was melting the stuff inside the Jeep because the exhaust came right here and it was touching this. So I put this heat wrap on it. That's why we're asking. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're worried about now. All the welding you do without <laughs> fiberglass is where you draw the line. Well, welding doesn't make me itchy all day. Yeah. Anyway, so we're cutting this whole bucket out, and you have to do it from inside, but it's like crazy glued on there. Hopefully, I told Chris the other day to get an air chisel so we can just like burr. I don't know if he did. He probably didn't. Chris? Oh, yeah. Did you get an air chisel so we can just burp it right off of there? No. I'll go, I'll go get one. What if we just got a punch in I the think, corners? I think we'll just that, actually. Yeah, what if we just got a punch in the corners and a hammer? Dry ice. Did you go get dry ice, Kevin? Why would I get dry ice? I don't know. Wait, why would he get dry ice? That's a that's an old uh, race car trick. You can dry ice the tar and stuff, like on the floor of your car, and then it like you literally just smack it with a hammer, and the whole, all the yeah. tar just shatters, shatters off like, the bottom. We did it in the 240s. What do you mean? You got to take the bolts off. Take the nuts off first. There's bolts? Right there. Oh, that's there? Yeah. Is it a bolt from the inside? No, it's just a nut on the bottom. Oh. We are so far off to a great start. It's fine. <laughs> Look, it was burning the box. That could have literally. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pump we used to air up our bed, but because I, what way, I need. Way back when we lived in the Jeep. Yeah. That tells us how often we go into this. It's a lifetime guarantee power torque hammer. That was to tighten the joints. The Factor 55. Handy dandy Factor 55 toe hitch. Oh, that's where my hitch link's at. Yep, found it. Oh! I don't know what that is, but it looks like a button. This is... <laughs> I don't know either. Oh, psh. It was an air valve thing, probably, at one point. There's parts missing. Look. Push this down. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Is there still? Yeah, it is still in there. Oh my God, that's been in there for it's years. <laughs> is there a date on this thing? Heat by 2032. This has been in here for three plus years. Oh, look, there's mold. Oh. oh uh, and you're worried, and I'm worried. Oh, Chris is over here worried about fiberglass when in reality there's just mold growing in our teeth. Why did I? Why did I remove it? Not back? Just. Reminding everyone, we lived out of this for like three and a half years. So this used to be the refrigerator, apparently. <laughs> we never had one of those. <laughs> so we just took this off. Look at this. We have no... Are those an aspirin or something? Or? Oh, they look like comes? candy or There's something. Candies? It's an antacid. Oh, I put that back there so to stop the rust. It's an antacid. Yeah. <laughs> an antacid. Yeah, that... You literally had me for about two seconds, three quarters of a second. <laughs> and I'm like, Anna, Rust, what? No. What did you just say? I said, hey, baby, can you please grab the shot back? So that is not what you said. <laughs> that is not what he said. He said, hey, woman, go do your job. Get the vacuum cleaner. Oh, those are some fighting words. I'd never <laughs> say that. But I'm going to go get the vacuum cleaner because that's gross. That's what I do it. <laughs> oh, look, Brittany actually doing something, guys. <laughs> I really would like to know what that is. Something spilled, huh? I just made it back there. This poor Jeep. Look at the amount of. Look at this. It needs a rag. Okay, look, real quick. Now, our defense. This Jeep has literally been to hell and back multiple times and always come out the other side. Yeah, usually. Usually not too much worse than we're aware. The issue is, is we've done it about a thousand times or more. Look at the factory jack. Oh my I've never had, Clearly. oh my God. What? I have never taken this out of here since 2018. <laughs> I've never used the factory anything. Also, whatever that stuff was, ate through the paint in like multiple places. Yeah. No, no, it burned. No, it like Like it burned. turned to black. No, definitely not anti-rust. Whatever it was, it like it melted or no, burned through that. it, like bubbled. I don't know. I do want to know what type it was though, because it definitely was probably a candy of some sort. And I want to know what it was because it ate through paint. Although 
but I think I just went at the bottom. I feel like I've oh, seen this is... video before. <sighs> well, that's permanently part of the Jeep. <laughs> okay, plan B. Oh my god! <laughs> Last time you're gonna go that deep, huh? Yeah! I go deep. All right, okay, come on, come on. Chinese marketing at its, at its finest. Drill master, heat gun. <laughs> Should be like heat master, maybe? Because <laughs> cause it, it's even got a drill bit. In it. I know, I, <laughs> drill master. That gets warm, I did. Yeah. I would also just like to point out that we did not bother looking to see if Motobilt had any sort of suggestions or recommendations no on how best to, yeah, no constructions were looked at. Why don't you take your cute little Not outfit. to say that they do have any, I don't know, I'm just saying we never bothered to look. Why don't you take so. your cute little outfit over there to the computer and Google it. Several days later. Kevin. What? Kevin. Where are y'all going? We're going to Home Depot for like a little electric. Me. Like, like an air jack? Or not an yeah, air jack? What's it called? It's like an air chisel, sort of. Air chisel, sort it's of. It's got thing. like little teeth on it and it goes me. Oh, I'm going to tell that guy at Home Depot. Like, I need a thing that goes me. Got a package delivered from the up sky. What's that? Oh, I know what those are. It's handy flags. <gasps> With our logo on them. Don't ruin it. Oh. Golly, Miss Molly. My bad. Oh, those are sick. Oh, boop. Yay! These are now for purchase on Handy Flag. If you want a light bright nation flag. So for those of you that don't know, uh, a lot of places like Sand Hollow State Park, which has sand dunes, they have a rule that you have to have a flag on your vehicle for visibility and safety purposes. So we always use Handy Flags because they're sick because they kind of break down just like uh tent poles do so they take up almost no space i'm doing this one-handed there we go they take almost no space inside your rig when you store them but also quick disconnect they it literally is. just boop. boop that's it and then when you're ready to take it down boop 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 and boop and just roll it up and, and that's, it. that's it and you have you don't take make, up any space make sure you do the boops Boops. Yeah, if you do good, yeah, you gotta do the boobs. Wait, but it, so they, you're, they're selling them on their website now? Yeah, it should be on their website. Oh, that's so As far sad. as I know. He never oh, told me he was doing this. That's awesome. It is Handy cool. flag. Handyflag.com. Handyflag.com. Awesome. And for the record, we don't get any commission from them or anything like that. It's just us helping out a, a company that they're, we really so like. So they're here local. Yeah. In southern Utah. And they're. We've always a, used their flags. We've talked about them multiple times. They're yeah. just cool people. And. They're just, awesome a, they're just a family putting it together and doing it. And no. it, yeah, I love it. And also, so we just got back home. We left for a minute. Why did we leave, Chris? Go to Home Depot. Because this tray is coming out one way or freaking another. I figured out the easiest way. You gotta cut it out to here, and if you pry this up, you can get a razor blade, but you have to follow the razor blade with a pry tool and cut that rubber. It's actually rubber, it's not even tar. It's like literally like seam sealer. It is so strong. Yeah, but... that is like crazy strong. Yeah, and then you do it like this. So wait, so you're using a razor blade, not that thing? Yeah, but you can't get under it with anything else to get a razor blade under there. Uh, let, me let me demonstrate.
All right, so I got all that trimmed out, all painted in gloss black. I don't, I don't know what Kevin's doing under there, but. <laughs> I'm looking at where the exhaust is gonna go because we're gonna have a gas tank back here now. <laughs> and I will tell you. He's playing with exhaust ideas. I, I hate dumping exhaust under the tub because one, when you're sitting still rock crawling or you're, you're on the Rubicon big group of people, that exhaust is just dumping down. One, it's just it's going. sitting underneath you, and two, it's just kicking, as a, as a turn down, it's just kicking all the dust up. And so I do my best to never do that. I always want it to face out as much as possible. Also, if it's under the cab, it can create a resonance because it's not that and stinkiness. Out the back and stinkiness. But we are running both cabs and keeping all of the uh, carb compliance stuff. and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want we don't like smell. We don't like stinky smells. So I'm looking to see where we can go. It would be sick if it was like the LJ or TJ where you could cut a hole in the body and come out the side, but there's no, there's no, that's not a thing here. I'll figure it out. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is put this panel in the back of the Jeep. But before we do that, it does come in pieces. So we're gonna have to put some happy little tacks on this guy. This is the trim ring that holds the center in. So all I did was get this all bolted back up. It's upside down. So we're gonna put some happy little tacks on the outside and um, get this ready for some paint. I'm probably just gonna shoot it black because it's under the carpet, nobody cares. I know. There you go, it's gonna be black. Got the Millermatic 220 out. Um, if you're doing anything more than like every other weekend or one-time jobs, I probably wouldn't buy that um, <coughs> welder. This Miller, killer. I love this thing. It does so much that I need it to. Like, I don't even, the thing is awesome. But let's get this thing teched up. I got that tray all tacked up, cleaned up, welded and stuff like that. I did get the tray shot black. Oh, there's the other piece up there hanging on the thing. Right there. I also prepped the fuel tank tray and I got that all painted up. What I did do is I shot the inside with like, um, I had some leftover Raptor liner from another project that we had. So I rubberized the inside, just chafing and noise and it is an aluminum tank going in a steel skid um, that's just something I did and then I did shoot the outside the outside is just uh, satin black but uh, the inside is Raptor linered and then I was running out of black and I still have to do the tank straps and some other stuff so I did have some gold left so these things are like really shiny. I know the camera is definitely um, not doing it any justice, but uh, they're gold. Kevin said he didn't care. He said, I, I, don't, I don't care what color they are. He said, nobody's ever gonna see it. I don't, I don't care what, I don't, I don't care what color it is, but uh, so now they're gonna be gold. So eh, on to the next thing. So this morning we're doing fuel pump stuff and I thought, hey, as long as we're in here, take the evap system out because I have a feeling that that canister is probably full of dirt. I wanted to get the camera to see how dramatic this will be or anti anticlimactic. Only 120, off-road miles pretty much. So I was gonna, <laughs> I just took it outside and hit the air up and see how much dirt and dust comes out of this thing. So this is just the breather that allows us to have breather abilities. Oh, there is a filter. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Let the chalk come out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
<laughs> you think that could be why my evap? <laughs> we'll report back, but I'm pretty sure that's why evap doesn't work. I wonder when the last time I cleaned my cabin filter was. <laughs> uh, yeah, this just goes back together. Yep. This just quarter turns on to here. Oh, there it is. Bloop. I bet you it works better now. Now that that's clean, Kevin's gonna try to clean the cabin air filter because I'm pretty sure that's uh, Johnson Valley dirty. Is it dirty? Oh my God, there's stuff hanging off the bottom of it. We might want to clean those too. There. Jesus. Is there fuzz and fur and jelly hair and stuff in them? Oh. So I have reusable K and N. Oh. Cabin filters. I think you're just supposed to soak them in water, actually. Oh. That's bad. Yeah, you can't see with the sun, but. Oh man. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> you can see all you know, the fuzz in the there. <laughs> this is a public service announcement to go clean your cabin air filters today because they're probably dirty. And the part number on those K&N air filters are BF something 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 something. 2064. BF 2064. So if you guys want to get a set of those K&N reusable air filters, which are nice if you're in the desert a lot like we are, Northridge actually carries them on their website, Northridge 4x4, and you can use the code STEPCHILD. That's our new code at Northridge 4x4 is STEPCHILD. You can get up to 20% off on anything on the site. Say up to, because we don't know everything has a different amount of discount, but it's up to 20% off. Code STEPCHILD, and there is what you're looking at if you want that. So you do have to modify your factory fuel pump in order to use this tank. You basically just have to make it longer. So all you have to do is pull the C-clips out of here, the one C-clip here, the rails will come up. You take the two short guys out and you just put in the two longer ones and put the springs and everything back in and now it will, now it just reaches deeper. Now who's, the other, <laughs> who's the other short guy? You're gonna take two of us out? Time <laughs> Taking two short guys out? You take the two short guys out and you put the two long guys in and then this will fit in that taller tank. That's pretty much all I have to do. All right, quit diddling your dangle. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> so this right. will only fit in one way because you can't put it in this way because the back of the tank is right there. So this this would never read zero. So it does have to go in this way. And you just shove it in the hole. Get it in there. I know I hate all the plastic. Plastic with fuel and heat yep. and all that there good stuff. There it goes right there. That's it, and then there's a, there's a ring that bolts right. down. You gonna put a ring on it? I can't, I can't, I can't, what? Is that impossible? I can't put the, that finger up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, you can't even tell. <laughs> why, you can't even tell. Why is it a gold ring? You know, gotta put a ring on it. You can't even tell, it, it blends. It's true, it does kind of blend. It blends in. Bling, bling. Oh, wait. What? Even the hardware is <laughs> Oh, okay, so we are close. So they do give you these rubber strips that you wanna lay down so the aluminum tank doesn't get rubbed through by the steel, especially once I smash this steel into some rocks and I bend it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see her set, set it's right so in there. It's heavy. <laughs> Actually, does it go this way or does it go side by side? I don't know. The, the fuel tank's, the fuel filler's over here, right? Well, yeah, but I was just thinking like, all right, ready? Smushing it in there. Oh. That's it, huh? We'll cut these guys off. <laughs> More gold. <laughs> Kevin said you didn't is that, care. Is that just a joke? You said you didn't care. <laughs> I didn't, I guess you won't. I was running out of black. These are straps on top, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna cut these here. Now I have like some rubber that's like sticky back and I am going to run it on the inside of these just because, because I can. Because I would rather, <laughs> I'd rather do that. Don't have to, <laughs> don't have to. Just would rather. All right, there she is, ready to go in. Straps are on, like you said, he put some rubber under those straps as well so we don't have any rubbing issues. And that's it, the whole thing will go up. This will locate on the sway bar mounts there and that locates on the rear frame, is it? Should I polish it? No. Okay. It's not gonna be seen. Damn. Not gonna be seen. Just like at all. kids. Yeah. No seen, no hurt. Yeah. Kids should be seen, not heard. Um. What do you have to do back here? You gotta cut off some brackets. So there's the stock. 
um, muffler bracket, exhaust hanger. Uh, this one's well. We gotta, I don't know who did that. We're gonna cut that off. And then there's one that uh, was on the other side right here. I already took that one off. I think that'll be fine. But this one we gotta at least cut the knob off. Cut the knob off. All right. Do that. Okay. Put in some touch up painting under here. Nothing like what Chris does. I just painted everything that was like rusted. <laughs> I was just like, look, this stuff's rusting. Let's just go ahead and hit it up. I don't care. I know there's dirt. Like, it's bad. I could just spray this all we in black. We, we should have painted it gold then. No. Kevin doesn't care. No, but I'm just gonna spray it all. I don't care about the, all the dirt. I'm just gonna spray paint <laughs> over the black, over the dirt. When that falls off, we'll spray more spray paint on it. All right, let's see what we can get up here. Let's see. Let's see. Where do I hang this? I'm a muscle hamster. You. Oh, well, then you gotta give me some cabolts. You care to bolt it? Oh. I will help you. You want help? Would you like some help? Right there. That's actually not bad at all. You're gonna have to lose something, right? No, that's not bad. That's that's pretty good. So I was kind of worried that it was gonna hang super low, but if you look, no, I mean, it tapers up in the back. So as you get to parts or angle wise, like, I mean, it like it hangs down, but you have, you have the diff and axles. And then, I mean, it's got a skid, right? Like that's not gonna stop me. If that hits on a rock, technically, if I have the traction, it should just pull me over. No, and usually you hit the end of this. So you are already at it. You are already at the point. Right. Unless I'm just being an idiot and I come down on a rock, like, Yeah. but for the most part, yeah, for the most part, I think that's, yeah. Holy cow. Wind is blowing right now. Well, uh, I was spray painting in here. I had to have a little. So, yeah, that's that's it. Looks really good. See, it's all right there. The cover will go on right there. That's it. Let's see. Oh, it looks like I can still keep my toe hitch. <coughs> but that's what I always smash. So we need to, like, relocate that somehow. Oh, that would be cool. Just put it right there. Yeah, is there room? Yeah, there is. It's a lot of work, but there'd be room. That'd be, that'd be sick. Not the toe hitch, but the... Six pin. I had a four pin at one point too. It's on the same thing. Oh, is it on there? It's on the same board. Oh, okay. Yeah. I started spray painting some of this to kind of clean it up so it looks nice. And then you can see where I didn't spray paint it. <laughs> like all oh, that's gonna be cleaned up. The, the fuel filler is gonna be right there. And then we're gonna have to route it, I guess, just in front of like over the top of that coilover uh, tower. Yeah, we'll, Shock tower. We'll get it in there. We pulled the whole fuel pocket out and rotated it. We can cut this whole piece of metal out and come straight down and into the filler there so we, we could cut that out not really a big deal it's not really holding i don't think it's really holding on to anything i don't think anything's gonna have an issue if we cut that out or we could leave it factory here and and, and then cut this guy off seal it and actually put the filler neck right here at the back of the tank, which would mean all we have to do is run a hose here and then straight to the filler neck because the filler neck would be right there. This isn't meant for having a tower right here, which is the tower is in the way and it's normally would just come up and it's fine. You don't really know what we're gonna do. So know. so either take a sawzall or, or a, a, a whole, a, what, what a, whole you, saw. a whole saw, you just take a whole saw and just brrr, and just run a whole saw through here and then come down and in um, and just rotate, just rotate this whole guy over down into there way back there um so i don't know I, I i don't know but what we do know i'm gonna move forward with this so we put some uh white caulk down but it dries it, clear it dries clear it dries yeah, clear it does dry clear and that still gets secured down it gets, yeah this gets screwed down and everybody's happy it's screwed down and and uh fastened it down goes like right there and then you are supposed to use the factory, but I have these cool little M6s button heads, so I'm gonna use these. Cause I already has them. I think it kind of warped when you welded it. Well, it did, but I did it on purpose. It's welded, it's warped up, not down, if that makes sense. Where's the hole? Where's the hole? Right there. <laughs> Found it. So anyway, that's all looking really good and clean. But yeah, the biggest thing is we gotta figure out. I think my favorite part is changing fuel pumps. <laughs> yeah, right there. if something happens, that's really, really nice. So once we figure this out, then the rest is pretty simple. We just plug the hoses in and, and uh, move on to the next thing. All right, so I guess we're not going to do some aluminum welding. Uh, Chris, I think, decided, well, I mean, 
if we did that, we'd have to take the tank down, we'd have to redo it, weld a lot of welding, and then some figuring out of some hoses, or we literally just notch this corner out and just make the fuel filler just go down and in. Yeah. So, I mean, this this is the quickest way. Which we think will work, and should work. It'll be less intrusive, like we won't have a hose out. It'll be a little cleaner if we went this way too. This yeah. way would be way more factory. If there was just an nipple there, like it would have just been yeah. hooking up a hose. and. Yeah, and I, I let Moto Built know they're gonna look into it and see maybe it's something they do for the future. I don't know, but um, go ahead and show them what you're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna notch this out. I'm gonna go straight into here. I mean, I mean, do it. Oh. <laughs> so we're gonna just hope the body doesn't collapse after we cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just gotta get the back side right here. Always, always get, get the back side. Always get it. Oh yeah, work it, Chris. Oh yeah. Nice now day. I can bend this back out of the way. And I can get behind it. Oh, is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, because I couldn't before. Uh because then the it looks bottom, like you could just bend it down. Yeah, the bottom of that was folded under, and I knew it was just a cover piece, so I was just trying to break the cover off. Well, you just hammer it down. So I can get into there. Because that's janky. Oh, okay. I was going to hammer it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think I got it. I have it back in, installed. It is now turned behind here. And if I just squeeze through here... I put a hole right there and there's a tab at the bottom, tab at the bottom of the filler and it'll make it through that hole. And then we can put the hose directly on there and then 90 and go in. So that's what I came up with and that's uh, what we're gonna do. So then this will actually run down with the hose. It's just out of the way right now. So I can drill the holes. I'm gonna get this bolted up and we'll get a hose on here and we'll see how she looks. Now let's see if we can get it in from the back side. Get my little fingers back in there. Can we get it? Oh, come on. Are you too good for your home? Get in your home. How'd I get the last one in there so easy? Oh, and there it is. And we are through. Now, can we get it all the way through? I don't know. <laughs> it is there. It is there. You know you want to. It's coming. It's coming. Positive that once this goes in there one time, it'll be easier to go in and out. Oh, no. I think we got it. Come on, buddy. Yeah, when in doubt, get the big guns out. Oh, that won't fit back there. All right, so now all we gotta do is make a hose go from right there to right there. All right, so once it's mounted, as you can see, it still fits really flush. It's very, totally works. We are all back in, and then it comes down in here, and there's plenty of room for the hose, and then it should just 90 right into that guy. And then I'll tuck this I'll tuck this guy up with it. Right now it's just like out of the way. Oh, and I got the locker line. I gotta get the locker line moved around, but, but that's where she's gonna go. Now we do have this reducer we need to use. So this large side is the tank size, which I don't know why they didn't just make them that size all the way down, but whatever. So I have to put a little piece of hose here so that I can connect those two, and then I'll 90 the big fat guy down into that guy. Or maybe, maybe I can get here. I don't know, we'll have to see what kind of hose combination I can come up with. So I just ventured upstairs, and this is why I keep everything. So I found a piece of, I think this is inch and three quarter, or whatever the large size is. I found a piece that had a slight bend to it, which will get us into the tank and just up and over the frame rail. So I will use this piece. And then I found the smaller side, So, but I found a 90. So I will cut this off and I will use this part of the 90, basically out of the bottom of the filler to get over the frame. And then I'll put this over the frame into the tank. So now I just gotta get all this trimmed up. And this is what I came up with. So we just cut it down. Had to cut a couple inches off of this piece. Still, I'm pretty sure she's gonna fit. And then this guy should just fit. Uh, oh, we are on, look at that. And we're rounding down. So that guy goes all the way on. And then as you can see, oh, there we go. Huh, it's on. I just gotta put the clamps on it and tighten her up. So also I figured while we're in here redoing stuff, the lines for the PSC have uh, rubbed through the sheathing. So it didn't rub through the, the line because Chris put a sheathing on it, but that's like up against the bolt. So we need a new sheathing. And my ram 
has been on here for a couple years, a few years actually. And it doesn't leak or anything, but it is pretty beat up and there's like nicks in the shaft there. So it's still not leaking or anything, so that's good. But I figure while we're in here, we probably should get a new RAM. There's no point in having that be an issue since we're refreshing it all, right? So, yeah. so went and checked Northridge. Uh, it looks like 37, $37 with the stepchild. You put that in to the coupon, save 37 bucks. So it was originally 370 something and we'll get it for three. 33, 333, Jesus. We need these tabs and stuff anyway, cause we, we have a new tie rod. We need to be able to weld that on for everything. So gotta get a wire wheel. Okay, one of the last things you have to do is we have to extend the fuel feed line. So this is the fuel pump feed line to the engine. They give you these disconnects and more hose. So you cut that little 180 that was on here off and then you put the hose on there and you put the 180 back on up there, which I'll show you in a minute. You also have to extend, oh, oh, look at that. Yeah. I found your leak, holy cow. What, is, oh, is that my EVAP leak? There's an EVAP leak right there. Oh, there is. Wow. Put some goop on it. Yep, we're gonna fix that because we thought that the canister was the leak, which is why we took it out, down and cleaned it all up. Yeah, that's got a- Pretty sure. That's a, that's a pretty good hole. It's like somebody drilled, oh. Who drew? It's like somebody drilled through something at one point. Uh -oh. I don't know where. I don't see any screws anywhere, but. Yeah, there's no screws up top because yeah. this is where the seat sits. There's nothing under the seat. Uh-oh. Found it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we gotta fix that too. But you have to extend the lines that were from the EVAP up there too, which I ended up, oh no, the vent. So there's the vent tube comes all the way down here and goes to the tank to the pump. But all I did is when we did this, so I just took that line and I took, this was the extender piece that went over to the pump because it went like this actually, just like this and went all the way over there to the pump. I just took that out and now it goes from there straight to the top of the pump. We gotta rewire the actual pump. So the connector is now up there. They give you wire to extend it and you have to extend that. Now we can uh, throw some fuel in it. See if she'll start with open headers. See if she'll start. She'll start with open headers. She'll just be obnoxious. If everything was done right, she'll start. That's why he has me here. He's so funny. So as it's going down, if you look in here, so you have to extend the pump wires. So the pump works, this is fuel feed. This is the vent that goes up to the filler, which is right here. The last one is this that needs to go to the EVAP canister over here. Um, I don't need this right this second, but we will be hooking that back up. But now we're gonna throw some fuel in her and see what's going on. See if she's stuck. Here we go. First fill. No leaks, Ma. No leaks yet. Let's. What do you mean? Yeah, it's right well, there. If it would have leaked, it would have. Make sure that where the connectors went don't leak either. We push those guys on there, so let's find out. I really didn't know those connectors were fuel proof. Some plastics, you know, aren't it? Some plastics melt. Everything else in this whole fuel system is plastic. plastic <laughs> when I put this down, we put that silicone on there. Now it sounds like it's part of part of the Jeep, and it doesn't have that ting ting. So I also put little little dollops of silicone all the way around so that this the top tin should be nice and sound solid also, which we will test in a minute. You ready? I'm ready. Let's see how loud and obnoxious this thing is. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just gonna turn it to the run position and see if there's any fuel leaks. Oh! Uh -oh. Got a leaker. Uh -oh. She's under there. Alright, well I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> we had a leak. We had a leak. <laughs> A little fire. connector <laughs> yeah. was actually so, bad. I've used these connectors a lot in the past. Um, every once in a while you do get a bad one because it is, I mean, it's it's got a few mis uh, moving pieces. So anyway, hose, boop. See how that one, see that? Oh, see how that one's not. Well, that one's not cut, right? Yeah. That was uh, either. Well, anyway, so it makes a great connection and it allows it to move and swivel. And then you can push the blue piece in and it should come back out. It, uh... We got under there and pulled it apart and the blue piece came with the hose and I was like, oh! Yeah. No, we use a razor blade, silly. Because you crush it. See how it's nippled on both ends? Yes. You have to use a razor blade when you cut these. He's probably right, because I don't watch it not come out. No, it came out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go to Home Depot and grab another one. But also, we might just get online and um, get, like, do it all with super fancy PTFE hose that's lined and that's not the right one the old system before i had the 426 in it, it used to have a filter on it and you can get the plastic guys to quick disconnect or whatever to run an so that's what i just did i ordered three eighths quick disconnect the male and the female so i will run a number six dash six line all the way into the back in the future yeah. when all that stuff gets here but uh, we are going to fix this and show you that it does work in its current configuration we're hoping
<laughs> it wasn't me this time. It was a bad part. And we're back. Yeah, quick run at Home Depot. Little quick splice. Now we're about to hear what it sounds like with open headers. You, you, you just need to just hit the switch. You don't have to push the brakes. Yep. Probably, probably yeah. like shit, but that definitely sounds like a. That sounds like a monster truck. It sounds like a drag jeep. Didn't it? It did. Could you imagine that at full? Just let's do let's do cutouts with just dumps manifold right dumps? off the headers. Just manifold so, dumps. But but we have to have a way for it to get through. How do we do that? Oh, a Y. You would have to Y. It's just, just a dump. dump with a valve on it, and you close the valve, and it just it goes, goes through, through the rest of the exhaust. All right, so that's the, I guess the end of phase two. So we got the full Atlas installed. Now we got the moto built rear mounted uh, fuel cell, fuel tank, fuel cell. Fuel cell. Um, that all went together actually pretty damn nicely. And Cleans it does up have a lot underneath. It does have all of the um, supplied parts that came with it. Although I will change a couple of things only because we're going a little bit more custom on some stuff. So, yeah. but it does work. What you get is it. This is exactly yeah. how you get it. Yeah. Everything works great. No, that was great. Except yeah. for that one fitting that was, that was a part failure. Not yeah. A, not on so that. if you have a three, six or a two liter or something, whatever, and you want to do a rear mount in conjunction with the gas tank, you can also do that. Oh yeah. So you could, right? you'd have to you find, you'd have to, you'd have to get a transfer pump, but you could add right. 15 gallons, <clears throat> 20 gallons, 20, 20, 21, 21 gallons. gallons. So you could like, if that's your goal, you can add that rear. Um, or you can go this route and delete, and then you have all this extra room under there. The reason we were doing this specifically is because we're going to the rock crawler, double triangulated four link rear that- The needs. Rockzilla, JL Rockzilla kit. Right, and we'll go over that when we finally get it because there's super neat features in that that other companies don't have, and the reason why the Rockzilla one performs better than the other companies. So right, right, right. We'll go over all that when we get there, but that's it, that's phase two. Phase three will be like axles and suspension. Yeah, we'll get together. the axles in next. Yeah, we have so we have Dynatrax 6080s, and there's a whole lot of cool stuff to go over with the Dynatrax when we get to that. Uh, as far as like why we're using Dynatrax and the technology that's in them, one of the big things I like is the steering and the steering Ackerman. Like the, you get so much steering out of the out of the uh, Dynatrax. We got more coming soon. I, it's it's crazy. It's as fast so as the much. parts get here. Yeah, we're <laughs> playing on parts and like trying to work as we go. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Light Bright Nature merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. Uh, we love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>